Welcome to English Country Life. Today we're going to talk about why we believe the Orpington is the ideal chicken for the smallholder. Welcome, my name's Fiona and this is Willow. We're in the last few days of the avian influenza restrictions and within the week our fantastic Orpingtons are going to be out free ranging in the field just in time for the breeding season. We've been asked a question on the channel this week around why we have so many Orpingtons. We thought we'd take this opportunity to explain why we believe the Orpington is the ideal chicken for the smallholder. There's so many things which make them great. Their eggs are fantastic. They will raise the next generation because they have great broody attributes. They do produce good eggs. They are great table birds. They pay for themselves in egg sales and point of lay sales. So let me take you through each attribute one by one in detail. Orpingtons are incredibly placid as a breed, but they do take a little bit of time to trust people. Chickens can recognise faces, so if you're buying them as point of lay, spend time in their enclosure and they will trust you quite easily. As you can see, they're all crowding around me wanting a little bit of whole wheat in my hand. Now, why is it important for them to be placid and friendly as a smallholder? Well, health checks are important. They need to be picked up on a regular basis and checked over. They need to be presented to people who might want to buy them. And people who do buy chickens from you want to make sure that they can easily be handled. Orpingtons lay eggs which are larger than the average hens at approximately 65 grams each and this is Rowan who's laying at the moment but I think she's also sitting on another hen's egg too. There are various estimates for the number of eggs that you'll get from an Orpington. The different estimates seem to be because a large majority but not all of them will brood and hens stop laying eggs when they brood. Of course, they make the egg song like every other hen, and this is Gannett calling the egg song, which announces that she's laid an egg. What makes the Orpington's egg perfect for the smallholder? Well, not only are they larger than average, but unlike most hens that stop laying when they molt in autumn and won't come back on to lay until spring, Orpingtons can lay eggs all through the winter, only coming off late to molt or to brood. A big fear for a lot of chicken keepers is that their chickens will escape their enclosure and that's particularly if they're free range. Orpingtons, that's probably a very unlikely scenario, providing the fencing around the enclosure is three foot high. We actually have a three foot high electric fence and we've only ever found Orpingtons outside of the fenced area when they're adolescent, so when they're first starting to explore their ability to gain a little bit of height and they've got a light body weight. As soon as they become adults, as you can see from Willow, she is a large bird. And let me just show you her wing because in comparison to other chickens, the wing in comparison to the body is actually quite small. We don't wing clip, we don't need to. All of our Orpingtons as adults have stayed inside their free range field without any issues at all. So it makes them ideal if you're a small holder and want your chickens out in the open on grass. This is our electric fence and don't worry it's safe for me to handle because it's turned off. Because we're in the last few days of the avian influenza restrictions our chickens are still in their fully netted enclosures behind us but by the time this video airs they'll be back out in this field grazing. It's three foot high that's more than sufficient to keep the Orpingtons in. As adults they've never made it out to the outside area but because it's electric it's got a dual purpose. Not only does it keep the Orpingtons in but it discourages predators from getting in to attack them. In this area we've got a lot of foxes and badgers and although it's not guaranteed to keep those predators out it does make them a harder target. Unfortunately, we've got a number of neighbours who don't have electric fencing and they've not been as lucky. We've never lost a chicken to a predator, but 
our neighbours have lost, in some cases, entire flocks at once. If you are thinking about getting a fence to keep Orpingtons in a specific area, three foot high is more than enough, but we would encourage you to think about electric fencing too, because it's more likely to keep your chickens safe. We do have a series on setting up an electric fence and I'll pop a link up above so you can have a look if you're thinking about this. A broody hen is a hen that wants to sit on eggs and hatch them. Incubating hen's eggs takes 21 days and hens do go off lay when they brood. As a result, broodiness is something that a lot of poultry keepers want to avoid, but for the smallholder and homesteader, it's a positive bonus. For most poultry keepers, they hatch hen's eggs using an incubator, but good reliable incubators are expensive. They've also got to be monitored to make sure that they're operating properly and their water reservoirs need to be filled regularly to keep the humidity in the incubator at the right level. A broody hen, though, does all of that for us, ensuring that the eggs are kept at the right temperature and humidity, as well as regularly turning the eggs to make sure that the chick doesn't stick to the shell of the egg. If chicks are hatched in an incubator, they are vulnerable for the first weeks of their lives, so they're unable to regulate their temperatures until they grow proper feathers to cover their down feathers. So they must be kept warm, dry, and of course they need to be monitored to make sure they're eating and drinking too. If you've got a broody hen, not only don't you have to buy warming brooding plates or heat lamps, the brood hen does all of the work for you. She keeps the chicks warm, dry, fed and watered. For small holders, this makes the Alpington the true self-sufficient chicken. She's able to hatch and raise the next generation for your flock without any additional capital investment. What's even better is you get to see these wonderful hens running around with tiny little chicks following them like orbiting moons around a planet. Every smallholder with animals wants to at least reduce their food bills, but if possible, make an economic prospect with the animals that they've got. And Orpingtons give us three routes to make a little bit of money so that they pay for themselves. And ours are fully self-supporting. They pay for not only their food, but they pay for their infrastructure too. And we do that in a number of ways. The first is by selling their eggs, and these are their eggs and we sell these for eating at the garden gate now that doesn't bring us a great deal it's only one pound 20 in this rural area for six eggs so actually it doesn't cover all their food bills so how do we do that well we have a breeding cockle in the flock so a rooster called Ramesses and he fertilizes the eggs from our hens and those fertilized eggs can be sold as hatching eggs and we will sell those for for six eggs around £19.99 and that does cover the food bills but it doesn't cover the infrastructure and when I say infrastructure it will be things like repairs to the coops, brand new coops, electric fence um, accessories or even with the avian influenza restrictions this polytunnel frame which we needed to put in place to net over so that we could be compliant with the legal requirements. All of this costs money. So the way that we fund that is by breeding. And that not only gives us new hens to refresh the flock for the following year, but we breed a number of additional hens and those excesses are sold at point of lay. And that will bring us between 40 and 45 pounds each. The other thing with breeding is that for every hen hatched, there's at least one cockerel hatched. Now, some clutches you'll get more cockerels, some clutches you'll get more hen, but on average, it's one hen for one cockerel. In a commercial hatchery, what happens? Well, in a commercial hatchery, when the chicks are hatched from the eggs, they're sexed immediately and any cockerels are culled at that point. We choose not to do that. It sits really uncomfortably with me that those cockerels fight to get out of the egg and then are culled. 
What we choose to do instead is whether the hen or cockerel, they're all grown to maturity, they all have a chance to experience life. And at the time of this video going out, all of our chickens will be out from these legal restrictions for the avian influenza and they will be back out in our grass field. They will be running around, free ranging, whooping it up, having a great life. And our cockerels all grow to a mature age. At that point they're culled and they become table birds. And Orpingtons are great for that. They are um, the quintessential utility bird. So great eggs, and great table birds. And I appreciate that's not for everyone because the decision about what happens to the cockerel becomes yours and you have to make it. And it's okay to go and buy hens and have someone else make the decision about the cockerels. That's fine. I fully appreciate and support anyone who wants to go down that route. But as a small holder, if you're choosing to breed, you do need to make a decision about what's going to happen to those cockerels from day one. It's unlikely you're going to be able to sell them, even pure breed cockerels from our Orpington flock, it's really difficult to sell them. We might sell one in ten and you know that's a good year if we sell one in ten. But we can sell them but there's still nine we need to make a decision on and do something with. And nothing goes to waste here on the small holding and as I say they have a good life and that decision sits comfortably with me. That's everything that we believe makes an Orpington a fantastic hen for the small holder. They really are the great all-rounder. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give me a thumbs up below. If I don't deserve it, I think Willow does. She's been incredibly patient with me. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, come and join us. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll get to know of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you've got a question on chicken keeping or small holding in general, leave it in the comment section or we'll even make a video for you if we can't answer it straight away. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.